somebody in the corner will strike out and say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Keeper 100 podcast. I'm super excited, as I always say, got another great episode. And I know the setup looks a little bit different than it normally does, and that is because we're on Zoom today with my buddy, who is currently serving in the military in South Korea. Um, so super excited to get to pick his brain and just hear all of his experiences and what he's done in the military so far. Um, and obviously there's a 16 hour time difference and we're on opposite sides of the world, so we can't meet in person. So. With that being said, um, here with me that I have today, I have Clayton Howard, who is, like I said, currently in South Korea. So Clayton, thanks for coming on, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, bro. Th thanks for having me on this late. Like the time difference is nuts. Hey man, it's all good. We actually uh, just got done doing a, uh, a concert later and I just finished probably an hour ago. So I'm still up watching some UFC and we're here. We're ready to go, man. I'm always, I'm always down for a podcast. I love it. So yeah, man. How, how are you? Like what, how is life in South Korea? Uh, it's good. Like summers are usually hot and rainy and humid. Like we just got out of monsoon season, so it should be cooling back down in about a month, but, mm -hmm. uh, the country is actually really small. It's about the size of Indiana. Really? Yeah. Highly populated. Like it's, it's dense. Yeah. People. So Dude, like, that's that's crazy. Yeah, like I didn't know walking, it was that small. Yeah, if you're walking around off post, like people bump into you, like you can't take that to offense because there's just so many people they're used to just running into each other. Hmm. Other than that, it, it's not bad. Yeah, that's awesome. I, that's like when you said it's as small as Indiana, like I never would have pictured that. Cause you know, when you just see it on the map, it's like you don't really know the true scale. And the size of it that's so what what yeah. is the population of do you know the population of south korea i don't know it off the top of my head mm -hmm. but quite a bit for, though <laughs> yeah it's a lot yeah and also before we get started um if you guys are watching this right now go ahead and leave a comment thank clayton for his surface in the comments and also if you guys know someone in your life have a friend um someone that used to serve Take the time out of your day to tell them thank you for serving um just to let them know you know it's very because what they're doing we have our freedoms you know because they're going off and serving for us so clayton before we get started thank you for your service bro we all appreciate, yeah, appreciate you it. dude awesome so yeah so you have lived in the united states for the first like 18 years of your 18 19 years of your life and now you're in south korea so like what so you said it's like obviously there's a lot of people but like what else is it like, like living in South Korea? Like, how is it different from America? So a lot of our neighborhoods back home, it's just like houses and whatnot. Like you have a couple apartment buildings and bigger cities. Everything here, a lot of the people live in apartment buildings are stories upon stories tall. Like uh, the town that's outside of the base here, their their apartment buildings are like, 20 stories tall that and that's what middle class citizens live in really yeah so there so are there like any houses at all like or is it just mainly there, like that yeah. there's a few houses like uh if you're if you own a farm like you got houses and stuff like that but it, like how farms we have they're like hundreds of acres long wide whatever uh farms here are actually a lot smaller and they're like stacked on top of each other kind of mm -hmm. like like steps going up a mountain almost really yeah country's Dude, very mountainous that's that's very interesting and that's like that's like so almost like opposite of like how it is in america because like you know in america it's like there's houses everywhere and you know mm -hmm. occasionally you'll get the apartment building and like like you said like our country land out here is like hundreds of acres and you know there it's that's small so that's actually really interesting and i i guess you are right. Like South Korea is like very mountainous, like terrain. Um, yeah. Is that mainly like the whole part? Is it mainly all mountains? Yeah. Yeah. It, the, a little, the whole peninsula is covered in mountains. Mm -hmm. So like, like they can't really have big farmland and stuff. Right. Like corn, makes sense. they don't, they grow corn here, but it, they don't grow corn like what we do. A lot of it's like rice based stuff, uh, beans, 
mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. And we actually just went through a sweet corn season, man. It was, I love it. It's like a two or three week stretch, bro. It's the best. I know. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where exactly in South Korea are you stationed at? So we have posts all over the peninsula, uh, in South Korea, of course, but, uh, I am about an hour, about an hour train ride South of Seoul, the capital. Awesome. So have you, have you been to Seoul quite a bit then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been to Seoul a few times. Is it a pretty nice city? Yeah. It, it's a very beautiful city. Yeah. And I've heard, is there, cause I've heard like, that's like also pretty, like there's Western influence there. Like do a lot of, is there a lot of English speaking there? Or is it still yeah. mainly? Yeah. So uh, a lot of the citizens, like how, when we go through school, like the language we go through for our language school is like Spanish. They go through English here. Really? Yeah. And a lot of the, some of the citizens can speak very fluent English. Really? The, uh, so those citizens, when they go through their military training, because every citizen, uh, I know the males for sure. I don't know about the females, but they're required to serve two years. So the ones that speak very, very good English, they actually work with us. Really? Yeah. Dude, is that cool? Like having them work with yeah. you? Guys? Yeah, it's cool because we'll go out with them on the weekends and they'll show us like what to do in Korea because they know it. Dude, that and is they can so be a awesome. Translator for us. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I would have, yeah. And I never thought about that too. Like that they, cause I, I did forget about that. They do have to serve the minimum, like the two years. That is mm -hmm. really cool. cool. So can you kind of explain, and like I said, I'm not for, like, I don't know anything about the military. I am not educated on this at all. So can you kind of like explain the process of joining the military, you know, from high school, like getting recruited? Like how, how does that work? So, uh a lot of areas have their local recruiter and like you just go there, go to the office and you talk to them. I mean, first you got to figure out like a branch that you want to do, but don't go to just one branch kind of just like uh, go around, get like an influence on everything. And you just talk to the recruiter about like, well, what jobs they have available, like what military life is like, all that kind of sort of stuff. And once you choose a job, uh, uh you'll sign stuff they'll have you go through like a little physical test they'll go through your your record make sure you have like no no criminal records on you your health records make sure you don't have like uh like for example asthma or something mm -hmm. and then once you're all good with that you'll go up to military entrance processing station or meps and you'll go through a bunch of tests there like they'll do all this medical examination on you all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to get in details with that. <laughs> and then, uh, then you just kind of sit there and you wait and you wait and then you go through a counselor who will like verify you signing your contract. Be like, Hey, is this the job you want to do? Like you want to do this and whatnot. They'll take your fingerprints and then you finally swear in and awesome. then you just count down the days to when you ship out. Sweet. And how long if, of a process is that? Like, does that normally take? So it can vary. Like I've known people who walked in the office, picked a job like right away. And then they go up to MEPS two days later, do that. Two weeks later, they're shipping out to Fort Jackson, Fort Benning, or any of the other basic training posts. Hmm. But and then for me... For me, like I was still in high school when I enlisted, so I had to wait till I graduated and then counted down the days after graduation to ship out to South Carolina. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. And how, how was it out in South Carolina? Uh, yeah, I bet, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I bet. And that's crazy. Like with the monsoons too, like we had like, we have pretty humid weather too, you know, but for the Midwest, yeah. but like with the rain though, like. That's so much rain, dude. Like it, it reminds me of, I've never, obviously I've never been in a monsoon, but what I can think of is like the derecho that me and you yeah. are in. And yep. while I'm talking about that, I'm funny story, actually me and Clayton, um, I don't know when it was two years ago, was it two or three years ago? Oh we, we, uh, we all, we almost died together and yeah. the derecho. So long story short, I don't need to go in detail, but we're driving and a semi truck like tipped and we were un, like pat in the process of passing this semi 
and it like tips on top of us, but we we like just just got past it when it hit the ground, dude. Yeah. It was we were like That's we cool. were like so scared that we were laughing. We didn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. God, God's plan, dude. It, yeah, it, God was really with us that day, bro. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you mentioned like you get to go into the MEPS place and you can kind of like figure out the jobs that you want to do, um, and kind of verify the contract. So, what are some of those like careers and jobs that you can kind of get out of joining the military? So my my job is a uh, everything's in phonetics. So uh, my job code is fifteen Romeo, which is uh, Apache attack. Apache attack helicopter repairman, but you, you got plenty of jobs. Like obviously you got your, your infantry, your mortar men, artillery, uh, tank operators, but some jobs that you don't know about, we have uh, water treatment specialists, uh, laundry specialists, cooks, um, cyber security. Like there's plenty of them, uh, wheeled vehicle mechanics. Like I can go into it. Like, for forever there's so many jobs to choose from like there's over 150 in the army oh that's just the army alone that's just the army alone oh. you got 150 jobs to choose from wow i i would have never thought it would have been that much and like you said like that specific like to laundry and cooks and like water mm -hmm. treatment that's crazy really yeah. any civilian job you can think of the army's got it really yeah huh. dude that's awesome and so what are like you always hear like, oh, the benefits of the military are joining like are really good. Like what what are some of those benefits like with being in the military? Yeah. So like a lot of the financial benefits are like uh, college tuition is paid for with the GI Bill. Um, uh, TRICARE, which is your medical, a lot of your medical and dental care gets paid for. And then like it's not a lot out of pocket that you got paid for um that's kind of the basics of the financial stuff but a lot of the experiences like traveling the world like my first duty station once i got out of training south korea never would right. like if you had told me a year ago i was going to south korea i would said you're crazy <laughs> right yeah but, and you're like there you're in seoul and like you're in the country that's like mm -hmm. that's crazy that's crazy yeah i guess see a different part of the world that like a lot of people back home have never seen maybe we'll never see in their lifetime and i get experience different cultures yeah there, there's just a lot dude yeah oh i bet dude seriously and so so you you mentioned like um the apache helicopters is like what you're doing you said 15 romeo right yeah so what so kind of like what's your plan like what's your route that you're like you have in mind with you know your military like with that stuff mm. so like Ever since I was younger, like I've always wanted to fly. I was like, yo, flying's so cool, dude. And I knew like, I kind of figured at a younger age, I'm like, yo, I think I'm gonna go the military route because I've had a lot of influence from my grandparents with that. I've had cousins who've gone to the Marine Corps. And I'm like, yo, I think this is what I'm gonna do. So I kind of chose a job with a airframe that I thought would suit me best. And I'm just kind of, knowing the aircraft right now but plans for the future is to be a pilot for that airframe really yeah so get to know i'm i'm actually in the process right now of dropping my flight packet getting that all situated together dude that is awesome you're so you're gonna be flying yeah hopefully dude that's so sick so and yeah like how long does something like that take like yeah it's like the you see your flight packet and stuff. Yeah. So building your warrant officer flight packet is it can take almost a year. But what once you get picked up or you get accepted with that, flight school is like two years. Mm -hmm. And at flight school, you can I think depending uh how many slots there are available, you can choose what airframe you want to fly, like the Black Hawk or the Chinook or the Apache even some fixed wing. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking you want to, you were, you're doing the Apache then. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, those videos that you have on your TikTok, like I've been landing. Bro, yeah. <laughs> so cool, dude. Those are awesome. I, know. Yeah. I always see those. I'm like, dude, that is awesome. Yeah. That, that's like every day for me. 
Really? That's like a daily, just a part of your day? Yeah, that's a normal day for me. <laughs> that is awesome. And so do you also like learn, like not just like you're going to learn how to fly eventually, but like, do you learn like the mechanics of them, like how to fix them, like everything yeah, so, about them basically? Yeah, that, that's my job right now is I learn how to fix them. Like when something goes wrong, like I learn how to troubleshoot uh, aircraft inspections, stuff like that. And so you can kind of do, and so even if you were to do like something else, like it would still be like that, right? Like you would kind of learn like the ins and outs of it and then you would get the initial training. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's, that's super cool that like, and it's like a different, it's a whole different path that, you know, I feel like a lot of people really don't think about because it's like, oh, the military, like sometimes that can be, you know, intimidating for some people, but like, yeah, it's like, still like, you can learn so much experience. Like you're getting hands-on experience every day, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the experience we do, it can like, it goes towards college too. Mm -hmm. Like my buddy, he just, he just enrolled in a, in a aviation school uh, down in Florida and he's doing it, he's doing it online here. And uh, a lot of his like hands-on experience for his class is uh, actually our job. So he can use those hours from our job and put towards his hands-on experience for his class. Dude, that's awesome. And it also, it kind of like provides like a, a step ahead almost. Like it helps you out. Yeah. It kind of gets you going farther and faster than maybe other people who would just be, you know, taking it regularly. Yep. Yeah. And so, I mean, and that's, that, that's great. And on top of that, the army pays for the school. <laughs> and that too. Yeah, exactly. Like they'll, they'll pay for it. Yeah. You literally get paid to learn. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. And if you think about like college, like it's the opposite. You have to pay to learn, you know, you have to pay to get the degree. Yeah. It's like, but if you go to the military, they, they'll pay you, they'll pay you to do it. They, they, they pay for a lot of it. <sighs> yeah. That's, that's, that's just so different. You know what I mean? And that's, what's, that's, what's so awesome about it. It's so cool. It's like, it's a different, it's a different route. And it's, it's, it's like, I don't want to say it's non-traditional, but like, I feel like nowadays it's more like more people want to go to college or go into the workforce and do that. And it's like, but if you think yeah. about it, like it's really a, just as good of an option. Like they're and sometimes even better, like depending on what you want to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. Like, with that, like what, what is the hardest part about like what you do and like being in the army right now? Like what, what are yeah. your challenges I, with that? Yeah. So like some of the hardest part is like, uh, especially with my job, like, maintenance is like a lot of time it's not planned so like stuff will break down on its own and we'll have a lot of late nights trying to fix an aircraft and get back up in the air mm -hmm. uh being away from home is usually a hard one like like that like everyone has that problem with it but uh that's about the only thing that's hard about it uh like my schedule I, like i wake up i work out which once I do that in the morning, like I feel good and you just go about your day, whatever happens, happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, so what is one piece of advice you have for someone who's like, they're considering joining the military, but like, you know, they're not for sure. Like, what would you say to that person? Yeah. If you're thinking about doing it, uh, do your research, talk to recruiters, talk to, talk to people that you know have been through it. And they can give your input. And mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much just do do research, uh, spread out, get input on every branch. Because like I, I talked to an Air Force recruiter. I didn't talk to Marine Corps because I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, hoorah to my Marine friends out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've talked I've talked to Navy recruiters. I talked to Army recruiters. And I found I found one that like fits me the best. And I just went with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think even outside of the military, just in life, like people will try to jump into things just without you know being educated or knowledgeable. And it's like you can't do that and expect to to be successful and like for everything to work out. Like you have to do your research. And yeah. I think a lot of what I've heard before from like a lot of people who want to join the military is like they'll think about it and they'll like they'll really want to do it, but they'll they'll try to yeah like use like rush something like they'll go right in they'll just go right into the navy or they'll go right into the army and just say yes this is what i'm doing without you know doing any of the other research and they'll end up you know biting them back later and yeah they have to pay for that at the end yeah 
like I, I see some people do that and like I know people here who have done that and they'll be like man my, my job is not what I thought it was <laughs> I'm like I'm like yeah it'd be like that I also know people who like will hesitate and I'll say like yo don't don't hesitate like if you're if you're a hundred percent on it go do it mm -hmm. like like your your dreams what you want it to be go chase it right dude 100 percent that's and that's kind of what a lot of people are pushing right now too like i'm like i'm seeing on tiktok and like social media and i'm i'm, I'm so happy that it's happening it's people are finally saying like if you want to go do something like just just do it you know like whatever it is like just go after it you know put put it all into it make sure you know what you're doing and just just go after it mm -hmm. and that that's what i was taught basic too like my drill sergeants they taught me like yo if you hesitate don't like if you think something's right go all in on it because if you mess up at least you're messing up at 100 miles an hour right dude yeah i like i like that quote you said if you hesitate don't if you're if you yeah is that what it was if you hesitate don't yeah i like that that's awesome yeah. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to write that one down. I'll use yeah. that later on. <laughs> so, yeah. so like what's, what's the transition from, you know, being here with all your friends in your hometown, your family, mm -hmm. um, going to basic and then being sta stationed in South Korea. Like what, what's the transition like with moving the moving process? Yeah. For, for me, it was kind of a blur, especially going from the States to here. That all was a blur. Even when I left home, and I got shipped out to South Korea within two days. That was a blur too, because I got like no sleep. <laughs> but, yeah, the trans, like the transition with that is like, you guys, you say goodbye to your friends and your family, and then once you show up at reception, like you don't know anybody, but like everyone's in the same boat. No one knows each other, so like I kind of branch myself out, try to get to know people. I ask people what their jobs were. And like we kind of talk to each other about like where we're from, where our jobs were, and like that's kind of how it is in reception. And when you get to your uh, basic training companies, like everyone will introduce themselves to another. Like the drill sergeants will get together with you and be like, "Hi, I'm drill sergeant so and so. I'm from Indiana," and they'll just like tell you about your life and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you but, just kind of, it's kind of just like a meeting process and, you know, you just get to like meet others really. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like people that go to college, like it's people that come from all around. Don't, no one knows each other. Right. And you just get to know each other. Like that freshman zero day to zero day. Yep. I remember that. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. They just had that a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> but like our zero day, we get off that bus and you're, and you got all your equipment you're holding on to in a bag and drill sergeants are yelling at you to run to your spot. You drop your stuff off and you get in formation. Like for some people that transitioning is hard because they're not used to someone, they're not used to an authority telling them what to do mm -hmm. and whatnot. Like it, it's a big wake up call. <laughs> oh dude. I, I bet I've heard, I've heard a lot of stories and yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you. Like, <laughs> Big, big wake up call. So, so what is like, what's the hardest thing about being specifically where you are in South Korea? Like, are there any challenges with that at all? Yeah. I mean, being away from home, like, especially with the time difference, like, like the only time I can call people is like late at night for me mm -hmm. or early in the morning for me. Yeah. But yeah, like we're lucky we're doing this. Right now, like, I thank you for being on at one in the morning your no time. No problem. No problem. Like, I love it. it it's three o'clock here. PM? Yeah. Dude, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, being close to, obviously, North Korea is to the north. It's like, it's not a far distance. They like to, they like to play some games. They like to stir trouble. They, they like to test. And then, like, we'll get, like, I could get a call right now being like, hey, uniform on full kit to the hangar yeah like north korea will test some and then we're gonna we'll retaliate and do a show of force mm -hmm. yeah much saying don't test us don't try it though yeah don't try it you know what's gonna happen <laughs> don't try it <laughs> yeah and that kind of leads into my next question like 
so you're like obviously i i have gone down a rabbit hole about like just north korea like the whole the whole country just being so closed off from the rest of the world like it very yeah. much intrigues me and like i i actually have wanted to go to south korea um and just be like just be there you know and be like wow i'm close to north korea because because no one no one goes there no americans go there right it's like they have the the sanctioned tours and i don't even know if they still do those after COVID or not but they had those and it was like 50 americans a year would go in and it's like it's so it's so unknown you know it's so unknown and so like yeah. is that a big worry that like north korea's only x amount of miles and it's like also have you ever been like close to north like how close have you been to north korea so you you saw in the news about a month ago uh uh attack helicopters were or the u.s army was doing a training exercise close to the dmz yep that was actually us really that that, that was my unit we were well we were doing our first gunnery because we're a brand new unit mm -hmm. so that's that our first field exercise we got the pilots up in the air to get qualified on the weapon system for the Apache. And that, that's the closest I've been. It was like, probably like eight minutes away. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Is that, is that one? So that's also probably pretty close to the DMZ then too. Yep. Hmm. Have you, have you physically, cause I know like they have that spot. It's like where you can kind of view the DMZ, like from the each side. Have you been to that and South Korean side? I have not been to that yet. There are there are tours they do for uh, tourists and foreigners. They that can do that. I haven't done it personally. Mm. I mean, I would like to just to say, yo, I did it. I've been here, You're right? <laughs> I went to the DMZ. But, yeah, that's the, that's the closest I've been was when we did our aerial gunnery. How did that? How did that feel? Like, what, what did you feel like when you were doing that? Just felt like a. It felt like a normal day, except for uh, the helicopter was actually shooting. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're getting you're getting the shots off. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. We, I mean, we can't we can't use all the weapon system because uh, one of our weapons could completely erase the mountain that we were doing the range on. Erase the mountain. Yeah, it could it could erase the mountain. <laughs> Bro, what, what what kind of weapons are what what yeah what gun like what kind of gunnery is on like the Apache helicopter? Uh, so there's there's a cannon on the bottom of it, uh, and on the sides we got rockets and missiles. Bro, oh, you got rockets yeah. and missiles, bro. Yeah. I feel like you're like that's like some Call of Duty type stuff. Like you're flying the helicopter, just shooting them. Yeah, bro, that's wild. Yeah. So that's so cool though. Like I love that. Like yeah. that's like so you've awesome. seen some of the videos too. Like, oh, like yeah. we're we're up there at night. You can see the rockets firing off. <laughs> Dude. Have they have they I know North Korea likes to like test um a lot of their weapons. Have they have they ever done that like since you've been there? Yeah, they've done it pretty recently. Have they? Yeah. How, I mean how was they, it? it? It's just it's just a test. They're not shooting it at us because right. Like, it won't end well for them. Yeah, I think if they do that, like all hell breaks loose. Like, yeah, like the last the last time they tested, uh, they tested like eight missiles or something, and then U.S. forces and uh, Republic of Korea forces, we we retaliated and doubled the amount of tests back. <laughs> You're like, you want to do this? We'll do it too. Yeah, play at that game. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And so like this, this kind of also leads into my next question. Um, it looks like we only got 10 minutes left because I have free zoom, but um, with like, with all this testing and like, obviously there is tension, you know, there's a lot of tension between the West, South Korea and North Korea. How, like, do you see, like, what is the likelihood of like a world war three or like a war or something breaking out? Like what, what is the likelihood? Like, what do you think about that? If it were to happen, North Korea wouldn't be the ones to start it. Mm -hmm. They're they're just kind of like off in their own little corner. Because you gotta think too, we're close to China as well. That yeah, oh, like, oh yeah, like China's right across the bay. So like, you saw the Speaker of the House was visiting Taiwan. Yeah, Nancy. And like, 
like yeah yeah dude and china china wanted to play games so like we were we were on ready up for a while because of that mm-hmm. uh nate uh the navy was doing exercises around be like yo you don't want to play around like she's literally just visiting yeah there there was i i i don't know if like i'm into stocks like i don't know if you've read much into that but like nancy pelosi they always call her like the stock you know they all the stock expert because it's you know they, they yeah. try to claim it's insider trading but they're like she's there to promote these stocks and get i don't know it was it was a whole meme like for people who are into that kind of stuff <laughs> but and so like i can't i can't really speak my opinion yeah on that. hey man that's totally fair so how how does it feel like just knowing like that you're so close to North Korea, like, is it normal to you now? Like, was it, did it feel a certain way when you first got here, like to South Korea? Like, how does it feel? Yeah. I mean, it's normal now. When I first got to South Korea, I was like, I was like, yo, where am I? Like, like I thought to myself, I'm like, how did I get here? (laughs) Cause like the whole jet lag thing, that was the worst. Mm -hmm. Like it took me a week to get over that and get used to the time change. And then, like, when I finally got to my unit and then we kept doing all the ready-ups, like, every other week, I'm like, man, North, like, North Korea is right there. It's so, there. like, like our motto and uh, where I'm at is uh, ready to fight tonight. And that, that stands true. Yeah. Always ready to go. Yeah. We're at constant readiness. I like that. I mean, you have to be, right? I mean, at this day and age, you know, it's like, there's no, there's no, if something happens, like you got to be there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think for me, like it would, I would be a little nervous when I first, like if I were to first drop in, I'd be like, holy crap, like North Korea is like right over there. Like this is a little nervous, but like, I think after a while, you know, and once you get used to it and you kind of, you know, get comfortable, I, I think I'd warm up to it eventually. And I, I think it's also kind of cool. Like you're, you can also say like, dude, I'm this close to North Korea. Like, yeah, like, like, like like you said, we are the front line of defense. You are right, and like you said, like a lot of the people like from our high school, like more than likely will probably never get as close to you as North Korea. Like like you know what I mean? Like you can say yeah. that. Like I was this, cl- I was eight minutes away from North Korea in a helicopter. Like dude, like that's awesome. Yeah. Like what? Mm-hmm. I love that, bro. Well, like same thing with like Taiwan. Like if anything happens with Taiwan, oh. like my units get sent there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there has been has there there's been some tensions there, right? Like Reese with all the Yeah, with China. Yeah, China. Right. Yeah. And so so the last question I have for you, it's 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 not so like apocalyptic World War Three war type. Yeah. <laughs> what what is your favorite part about the military? Like what what's your favorite part about what you do? Um just like the whole diversity of friends that I've met. Like I've met people all over the United States. I've met people who have come from other parts of the world to join the U.S. Army. Uh, like, favorite part, I'm in South Korea right now. <laughs> never never thought I would have been here ever. Like, I literally got a free one-year vacation to South Korea. One year, right? <laughs> yeah. That I get, I get paid for. Um, I love my job. Mm. Like, like, every day, like, it's just... Every day I wake up, go to the airfield, the sun rises, like stuff like that. The culture I give me, like I learn, I learn Korean here. Like I know a couple of Korean phrases. Like I know how to say hello, goodbye, thank you. Mm. Uh, I, I'm a foreigner. I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, yeah, you're like you, like you said, you're just seeing the world, you know, you get a free one year vacation to South Korea. Like, yeah. That's awesome. And if you, and you know, if you, if you really love what you're doing, it's like, it doesn't matter if, as long as you're happy and like you really love what you're doing. It's like, that's perfect. That's great. Right? Yeah. Like, shoot, what was I going to say? Like my job <laughs> is just, it's just such an interesting job. Like it never gets boring unless never like, a dull day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never really a dull day unless we actually have nothing to do. Right. Yeah. We just kind of sit around and wait for something to break. Yeah. And you're probably, I'm, I'm sure you're probably doing it. Like you're probably a lot more content, like happy with what you're doing than a lot of people back here with stuff they're doing. Like, I know people that are like, I'm not happy with my current situation. And it's like, if you're, if you are happy with what you're doing, like that is great. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Like 
army you're gonna have days that suck like last like last thursday we had a ready up scenario and like i was supposed to go do some training that would be good on my flight packet and uh needless to say i didn't get to go do it so Mm. i was like man this sucks right (laughs) uh being away from home for a while like you get to see like people back home like enjoying their summer and i'm i'm eight minutes from the dmz watching helicopters blow stuff up right like like it sucks to see that but i'm like you kind of have to look at the bright side of it too and be like yo like i'm gonna i'm in an experience right now that like i'll be able to tell my grandkids someday right you'll be able to pass that on yeah dude and that's 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 so important too yeah and like like some of my influence too like uh one of my younger cousins who's my brother's age she actually just got out of basic like she decided to join because of me and the experiences i've had wow that's awesome to say that someone like because of you like that's that's awesome just yeah good that that, that probably feels really good i'm assuming right yeah like she graduates uh tuesday two oh really Mm -hmm. nice dude that's awesome and do you know where she's like getting shipped for basic or or no she graduates basic tuesday yeah nice do you know anything about where she's going so she'll go to fort lee virginia which is outside of williamsburg in richmond yep she'll go there for her training and she'll go back home to her unit because she's in the reserves she'll go back home and she'll start college in january dude that's that's so cool like just to think about like that's because you did that like now you're influencing somebody else yeah bro that's that's gotta feel amazing i'm sure <laughs> mm-hmm. well yeah that's looks like our zoom is about to end here so dude i want to thank you for coming on this has been awesome and i've actually got to learn quite a bit here because like i said yeah, i mean i me. dude of course like i i know nothing about the military and so like it's just cool to hear your experiences because you're obviously in south korea you're you're doing it and it's it's just cool to hear like your thoughts on it and where you are like over there because mm-hmm. i mean it's obviously a lot different than america and what we got going over here it's a lot different <laughs> oh yeah yeah seriously but yeah thank you for coming on bro i really appreciate it um thank you guys for watching this episode remember to go like and subscribe um comment remember thank clayton for his service thank someone you know in your life for their service um if you're watching on youtube check us out on spotify And if you're listening on Spotify, check us out on YouTube. Thanks for watching.